This week on Anya Don't Stop, we speak with organizer, mother, and professor Dr. Melina Abdullah about Black Lives Matter's Occupy LAPD actions. And we have more words and music with artists and activists relate. So the Black Lives Matter movement in Los Angeles was really building and growing and Ezel Fort was always kind of lingering and there were activists here who were doing work like with the family and around that. A lot of us were really focused on Ferguson and we're getting a lot of energy from the organizers in Ferguson, um, but also the organizers in New York and around the country. Black Lives Matter was supportive but wasn't really at the forefront of the Ezel Ford movement until the autopsy report came out. The coroner's autopsy identified that Mr. Ford's death was caused from a fatal gunshot wound to his right flank and a contact wound to his right back. The coroner also found evidence of a non-fatal gunshot wound to Mr. Ford's right arm. It was so, I mean, it was so clear it was like a, a state-sponsored execution. They shot him point blank in the back. Right, like how do you justify that? We knew that it was wrong from the beginning, but that was just such an assault. It was so clear that it was an assault on our community. And I had um, been working with a bunch of the organizers. There was a sister though who was um, kind of new to Black Lives Matter. She came in and had a lot of passion and we became very close. Shay Dixon is her name. And we were on the phone when the autopsy report came out and she was like, we shouldn't wait until Saturday. We gotta do something now. And that was December 29th when the report came out. Shay was out there starting on December 30th with her son who's 10 years old, Tommy. We built this infrastructure where we had um, members and allies delivering food, we had tents, we had sleeping bags, we were setting up schedules, and we occupied the front of LAPD headquarters for 18 days. This presence here, this presence in front, is a constant reminder to everyone that we cannot sit by. And we developed two demands. One, the immediate firing of the officers who killed these L Ford, um, Charlton Wampler and Antonio Villegas, and then the second was the filing of murder charges um, against them by the district attorney, Jackie Lacey. If we think about what policing means, especially in Los Angeles, you know, the LAPD has a horrible record for abusing and occupying and brutalizing and killing folks in our communities. And so the immediate kind of frustration and anger was directed towards LAPD. And it became kind of complicated because um, what we started to unearth is that there are all of these policies that are set up to protect police as agents of the state. It makes it difficult to remove police. And so we kind of focused our energy on Chief Beck, who lied and said that he wasn't able to do anything, and we know that's a straight up lie. Those officers stay, are still on desk duty, they're still getting paid, and he says there's nothing that he can do about it. So we know just like commonsensically that has to be a lie because what he's saying is that as chief, he has no power to remove police officers. Now, if those same cops walked up to some rich white woman or man or boy and popped them point blank in the back, do you mean to tell me they'd still be on duty still getting paid? That's an absolute falsehood, and we know that that's not true. Occupy LAPD, we really tried to bring the culture of Black Lives Matter in, and part of what we do as Black Lives Matter is remember that all Black Lives Matter, so that means LGBT folks, it means differently abled folks, and for me, it means also being a mother, incorporating our children. My oldest daughter, Tandiwe, she's been involved in BLM since day one. My kids are always at the meetings, and so we take a real kind of um, holistic approach to what it means to build a movement and to caring for each other. One of the things I think that we've seen with some movements, um, especially since the Black Power Movement, is you have to kind of segment yourself. So you're doing like the opposite of what you say you want, right? So for women to get involved, you gotta choose to not bring your family. So if we think about the number of black women who are single moms, I couldn't be active if I couldn't have my children there. So Occupy LAPD was built by two single moms, Shay and me, and um, built from the culture that Black Lives Matter has, that the whole 
people and the whole community have to be a part of the movement. I was born in LA originally. Um, my family, my mom, my dad, my sister, and I moved to Atlanta when I was like three. You know what I mean? And uh, we lived out there. I lived out there until I was about 22. And then my mother passed away in 2008, which moved me back to, uh, to LA um, to be with my little brother. And uh, like doors started opening up, you know what I mean? Like opportunities started happening, and one thing led to another, you know what I'm saying? Like started being. Uh, more engaged in like social issues through Public Allies, which is a dope organization that had me on Central Avenue, man, like like a block or so down from the original Black Panther headquarters on Central Avenue, like I think it was like 42nd. And, uh, you know, I was at the historic Dunbar Hotel for about a year and a half, like just doing work with folks that lived over there. Uh, and it was a blessing, man, you know, and I started doing this open mic with some friends uh, at Mercado La Paloma, which is, you know, kind of moved me into more of the cultural realm. Uh, and I started working for Mercado La Paloma for like four years after that. And, uh, and then like Black Lives Matter started kind of gaining traction, bro. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and took my focus away from just um, doing events to like what is the purpose and intention behind the events uh, and the music that's being created. I've always had a social lens, I guess, when I was writing poetry or, or, or hip hop. But I think after Trayvon Martin's murderer was acquitted it was like oh we gotta do something more bro you know what i'm saying my daughter was with me that year it was 2000 and then, what was that 13 i think that was the summer of 2013 when zimmerman was acquitted uh, my baby girl was here from atlanta visiting and uh she was like dad i want to go protest wow. i'm like uh uh okay you know what i mean like, i didn't want I, I didn't know you know what i'm saying that that fatherly fear came up inside of me and uh i think that's when i became really active and activated in the movement, um, being out there with the likes of like Patrice Colors and Mark Anthony Johnson and the team out here, um, Melina Abdullah. And um, my daughter really inspired me to get active, bro. And then since 2013, I've, I've been on 100%. What do you see uh, as the future of Black Lives Matter right now in terms of it making that transition from, uh, you know, a hashtag to a broader movement, uh, to a national and even international one? I look at the past right now and I, I look at communities like, you know, everybody highlights the, the romanticization of like, you know, Black Wall Street or whatever, right? But I look at communities like that in this country that were able to be self-sustainable, right? Of course, we knew like legislation kind of mandated that type of community because of segregation, but they were able to thrive, right? Like Black millionaires able to like get it in with each other from schools to transportation, all these institutions that they created and the amount of wealth that they had in this community, I pull from that and I'm like, cool. So if Black Lives Matter is what it is right now, building the momentum that it's building right now and the possibilities to dream, I think in the next 50 years, we can be a self-sustainable community, right? Where new businesses have emerged, new ways of commerce and you know, exchange have come up. And, and new ways of having a, a, a global conversation around who we are in this world um, defined by ourselves. You know what I'm saying? Nobody telling us what what we need to say or how we need to engage. I mean, you know, it's like, like we're going to be able to say because of this moment in history right now, my daughter's children can say, like, I'm able to be who all that I am because it started 50 years ago. You know what I'm saying? So. You know, I really believe that we'll be we'll be able to build institutional power um, within our own community. And I look at statistics like you know the census saying that the black dollar in this country right now is about two trillion, like two point five trillion dollars in spending. Like black community has two point five trillion dollars in spending power, and it's about forty five million black people in this country. I'm like, yo, that's a significant amount of of wealth. What happens if that money is repurposed for institutional power building? You know what I mean? So I think just Black Lives Matter gives me the space to dream about some stuff like that. Black life it matters oh. here. Black life it matters 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 here. Black life, it matters here. 
Black life it matters here. Black life it matters here. Black 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 life it matters here. Look. It matter, it matter. Living like humans with dignity matter. Living my blackness with 400 years of resilience through tragedy matter. Uh, building economies matter. Leveraging two trillion dollars of power would matter. Giving my babies new visions of who she can be in this country it matter. Uh, telling our story the glory it matter. Man, some moves, some money minded it matter. Make a move to move a movement it matter. Building our own institutions it matter. Call the games and call the truth. Cause they're killing our soldiers and throwing our troops in the noose. Hanging us out like we fruit. With all of the juice in my body, I'm screaming, we matter. <laughs> so fuck the lies they televise. I realize it's a real time to get reacquainted with the 40 million. We powerful, you powerful. We ancient, we tribal folk, we been here. Time to let them know. I bet you a bill if we went to South Africa, they would be scared. Hey, living in freedom will honor the dead. Hey. I'm Nas and Belly right now, ain't no time to pipe down Been so lost but I'm found, till the beast with me down I'm screaming Black life it matters here Black life it matters here Hey, black life it matters here Uh, black life it matters here